Have you ever found yourself staring at your bank account, wondering if there's a smarter way to manage your money? Could an AI-powered assistant that not only understands your financial goals, but also helps you achieve them? With a blend of humour and savvy financial advice, could that be the answer? Because this is no longer a figment of the imagination, it is a reality, thanks to companies like Clio. And today, I'm going to dive into the world of personal finance management and AI with none other than Sam Taylor, the VP of Technology at Clio. And Sam leads the charge in harnessing AI and machine learning in an attempt to revolutionise how we interact with our finances, all with the goal of making financial well-being accessible to everyone. But what is the story behind this company? How does Clio intend to stand out in such a crowded fintech space? And what role does AI play in in shaping a future where financial stress is a thing of the past? Well, join me today as we uncover the technology and the vision driving Clio's success, and also explore some of the challenges and opportunities of building products and platforms that are powered by AI and machine learning. And if you're a business that's exploring this, I think you'll really enjoy my conversation with Sam today. But before we get today's guest on, I need to pay the bills. We've got a huge podcast hosting fee to pay for when we're releasing 30 episodes a month. And this month, I've partnered with a company called KiteWorks. Now, legacy MFT tools are dated and lack the security that today's remote workforce demands. So companies that continue relying on outdated technology, though, they put their sensitive data at risk. And in a world where digital threats evolve daily, The need for a secure, modern solution has never been more pressing. Well, enter KiteWorks, the beacon of security and efficiency in managed file transfer. And KiteWorks isn't just any MFT solution. With its FedRAMP moderate authorization awarded by the Department of Defense since 2017, KiteWorks sets a new standard for security. And this certification is not just a badge, it's a promise of unparalleled protection for your data offering a fast track to CMMC compliance and eliminating some of those cumbersome, costly DIY authorization processes that plague so many of the alternatives out there. So please, step into the future of managed file transfer with KiteWorks. You can find out more information at kiteworks.com to get started. That's kiteworks.com to get you started today. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Somerset, where Sam is waiting to share his story. So, a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. Hi, Neil. Um, so, yeah, my name is Sam. So, uh, I'm the VP of technology at Clio. And I look after the, both the engineering and data and machine learning teams. So, working on the strategy of how we build the product, scale the systems and the people. My background is in engineering and machine learning and AI. So I studied computer science for my undergrad and a master's in machine learning at Bristol. But the last 10 years has mainly been working on products that that utilize machine learning. And the last three at Clio. Um, So Clio is an AI assistant. And it tries to turn the complexity of your personal finances into a conversation. So the same kind you'd have with a friend and really trying to help people through their financial lives from that first paycheck when you get out of college or school or university up to your your home and beyond. And since its inception seven years ago, we've helped 7 million people with 70% of those saying that Clio has has really helped their their financial life, staying on top of bills, saving their money and controlling their spending. So yeah, that's a bit about me and, and where I am now at Clio. I love it. And you're saying that since your inception, it's inception it's seven years ago. And of course, AI and generative AI, it's only gone nuts in the last 18 months to two years. And you've got someone with an extensive background in comp- computer science, machine learning. You've been in this for a long, long time. I- I'm curious, does it does it frustrate you and delight you in equal measure how suddenly everyone gets it? I think it's, uh, I think it's actually really useful. Um, so... Um, Clio, kind of in its inception, really kind of believed this transfer- transformational power of conversational AI and really building relationships uh, with people, especially with their finances. It's, it's a hard subject to talk talk about. Um, and our founder, Barney, made a big bet early on that uh, AI-driven conversational interfaces 
would really change how people interact with their money and and, um, and help them. And this is really important. Uh, as stats, so uh, we we work in in the US. 177 million people in the US are living to pay, paycheck to paycheck every month. It's a huge percentage of, of the US population. Um, but over those last seven years, we've really been able to um, understand how people interact with, with AI, with their finances, gather insight into each person's individual situation, and using generative AI um, has really started to allow us to build really deep, the personalized insights and proactive uh, coaching. So, to answer your question, I've I've seen this coming. Barney saw this coming for a long time, yeah. but really now people are are seeing this coming out in in different tools, um, and it really kind of sets Clio up to to help them too. And I would say both yourself and Cleo are slightly ahead of the curve here. You've seen it coming. It's enabled you to be one step ahead. So from your uh, perspective here, how do you see generative AI shaping the future of personal finance and also enhancing user experiences? Because I would imagine this is a topic very close to your heart, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think there's there's lots to uh there's lots to do. So I think personalization is definitely a big deal. I, I'm probably going to mention it a couple of times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really ensuring how Clio uh, and how Clio can understand and, and adapt to someone's preferences is definitely a core focus for us. Clio has a really unique tone of voice, which is something our, our customers really love and appreciate. Um, and that's come from those seven years of, of training our AI and we want that uh, that personalization to be seamless. So Clio and, and utilizing AI can adapt to what our users want. So um give you some give you some more stats. Last year in, in 2023, we analyzed 2.3 billion user transactions. That's not just a big number. Um, that's just a huge diversity in customers financial customers finances so it's about understanding how people handle their finances on a granular level um but it's also a big part of uh how we're continuously refining clio so it really resonates with them really can kind of connect with them one to one and is based on their actual spending and habits and preferences so we can we can help them in, in that financial life and before you came on the podcast, I always like to do a bit of research on my guests and try to find out a little bit more about the origin story behind the company. What lit that spark? And I was reading that Clio was actually born out of frustration with traditional banking systems. And I suspect that's maybe where the personalization came in and, and moving away from that one size fits all model. But is there anything you can share around those initial challenges the team faced and how leveraging AI maybe helped you? overcome some of those obstacles to create that more intuitive financial assistant because i think in in more than three thousand interviews on here one of the things that i learned is we all complain about stuff but other people such as yourself and the team at clio go out and try and create a solution to that problem and it seems that that's what you did right yeah definitely so so like i said i i joined i joined clio three years ago so yeah. wasn't wasn't there at the beginning but you're right a lot of a lot of clio's initial ideas and still strong today were some of those inefficiencies and impersonal nature of of the of the banking system um the banking system has become a lot less personal probably before my time um people did have a, a relationship with their bank manager they could go in and speak to them and, and help them um they were able to help you understand where you should uh where you should cut back where you should use your money differently um, that was obviously some time ago. Yeah, this is where Clio can really step in, both using that conversational interface and leveraging AI. This is where we've been able to overcome and bring back some of this personal nature. Um, so, providing personalized insights, for example, or guiding people towards better financial habits, um, or building kind of predictive tooling to help people 
uh, anticipate their needs and just give them the ability to take back control of their finances uh, and build that confidence and ultimately to live beyond that paycheck to paycheck uh, as kind of said that there's so many people doing that and fast forward to present day and Cleo continues to grow particularly with the recent series C funding I was reading about so I've got to ask with all that in mind what are the key technology and AI milestones that you're aiming to achieve in the near future I appreciate you probably can't share too much but is there anything you can share and how you this journey you're on to further revolutionize personal finance yeah so the last what year 18 months have been a pretty wild ride in the AI world right it's uh it's been going very quickly um but that's that means we're we're doubling down on on building out uh, the ai that powers clio with key enhancements on on those personalized insights and the the predictive tools to help people uh, live the, beyond this uh, paycheck but it's it's not just us it's not just the the products that we can build alongside this uh, that are deeply personal but also clio itself so how she communicates, how she builds a relationship, and how she is radically intelligent um, to kind of help you day to day. So a big part of that is is financial coaching um, to help customers achieve those financial goals. So if that if that's the kind of where we're working to on the AI side, um, we've also got to constantly improve our engineering infrastructure and how our systems accommodate kind of the growing the growing user base so we've been really focusing on how we improve the reliability and scalability of our systems but also the productivity of our developers so we don't want teams engineers developers to be impeded delivering value to customers so we really try and keep things simple um and we've been doing uh real advances there to ensure that's that's uh that's useful for them and make it they can kind of deliver value for the customer which are ultimately the the name of the game right yeah 100 percent. and i would suspect that every single person listening to this podcast in a variety of countries they all have different financial needs and you go to your traditional banks up and everything is this one size fits all so bring it back to that word again personalization it, it does seem to be playing a crucial role in clio success in better helping users manage their finances more effectively so this is a tech podcast, though. So how does your team utilize AI and machine learning to tailor financial advice interac- and interactions to each individual user? Because we all hear the AI buzzword and gen AI this and that, but it's yeah. great to hear how you're solving a real-world problem with it. Yeah, so um, let, let's take let's take two. Yeah. Um, so we, we've been, with the advances in LLMs, we've been really kind of leveraging those to understand how they are having a conversation with with customers so we we've been able to bring those in and deeply integrate those in into clio um but a key part of that is clio's tone of voice we have to keep that and we have um we have a team of content designers at clio many of which are uh, stand up comedians so that is part of uh, how it integrates that that type of tone of voice so we can build that relationship so yeah we we're integrating that into into clear with with the lms um but also we have to understand people's finances i don't know if you looked at your bank statement recently and the weird text that describes or supposed to describe uh where you spent your money we have a lot of machine learning and ai to pass that out and understand what that is and also build the patterns so we can use things like our AI budget, all the conversations um, people have with Clio and it's not those weird strings, it's really deep, rich information about your personal finances Um, but not in just that transaction over time and over kind of your your life at Clio Um, so yeah, we, we really use AI in many different ways, but there are two that help, um, I suppose, understand your finances and understand how to talk to you about them. And as I said at the very beginning of our conversation, from the outside looking in, it feels like Clio is somewhat ahead of the curve when it comes to AI and machine learning. You've been on a long journey here. And 
question I've got to ask is, is how do you stay ahead of the curve, especially in terms of innovation while in uh, ensuring security and privacy of user data? Because it's quite a, a delicate balancing act, I would imagine. This is a really in- interesting subject because it, because it's going so fast. Yeah. Um, but in terms of innovation, the real big thing that I I help the teams on or want to install in teams is experimentation. Mm-hmm. So experimentation is is massively important. It allows everybody, all, all employees at Clio, to come up with ideas, hypotheses, and be able to prove or disprove them. Um, so being able to experiment and learn is super important, and it has to be low friction. Um, and in terms of enabling the team for this, this experimentation, this I- innovation, um, two things come to mind. One is we keep our engineering stack really simple. Um, so along with our company values, we also have engineering principles, um, two of which... Uh, which kind of pertinent here are we innovate on our product, not our tech stack, and technical debt is useful. So this is important because it really keeps us delivering at pace and focusing on building value for the customer. So it means we can keep that high velocity and experimentation so we can learn fast, and learn at speed is one of our company values. And then the other side, a, a lot of, technical innovation which feeds into the product is coming from ai machine learning like like everyone is talking about it and we've been talking about but that has re- has to really come from a group of people a team so we build our product in cross functional teams called squads and they have a mix of product engineering machine learning analytics design user research content designers so a whole host of of different types of of people and disciplines um, because innovation really comes from understanding our users, the data and the art of possible from from technology. So it's important to have those mix of disciplines to to ideate on, on how we're how we're going to build. But then we also, outside of squads, um, in between planning cycles, we have what we call a fire break week. So this is between. So we don't work in quarters; we work in terms. Um, four months long, and we have what we call a fire break week. So this is where people get outside of their squads and work with other people, and that really cross pollinates ideas. Um, so yeah, really to summarize that that innovation piece is is multifaceted. It's technology, it's people, and it's structure, which then leads us to building products customers really love, and that is ever improving. And that that's the, the name of the game of experimentation i love how you mentioned their uh, technology people and structure and I, I also noticed before you came on that the, the team at clio has grown significantly in the past year so on that that principle that you just shared there how do you foster that culture of innovation and collaboration within your tech teams and how does that culture ultimately contribute to the development of clio's products and the reason i asked that question i think there are so many teams and so many enterprises of all sizes at the moment they hear about ai or the, whatever shiny technology they're after and the, the ceo will say i want that technology and out they go but of course it's so much more than that it is technology people structure and changing yeah. a company culture to make it all possible so what's your secret here for anybody that's just beginning this path yeah so um we talked a lot about experimentation. That that is so. Make it happen and learn at speeds are two of our company values, and experimentation really sits within that. And allowing people to be able to experiment uh, is important. And then the other side of that, you, you you need a guide, right? You need to know kind of where you're going. We have our mission um, is to help people live beyond a uh, a page a paycheck. Yeah. Um, but also we have objectives and key results. And these are um, at the team level and at the company level. And it really sets that guide for for how to move forward. So we have the, the good cultural stuff for experimentation and our values, but we need to be able to measure where we're going. And Clio is really uh, data-informed. Um, we're constantly sharing uh, our learnings and what we're testing um, whilst building very quickly. Um, 
So yeah, that that guides as well as that experimentation and how that team is set up um, is really kind of that uh, that enabler while the team is growing fast. But also, you have to hire the right people. And I think it clear we've done a, a really great job at that. We hire against our engineering people, uh, engineering principles, and our and our values. Um, so that's kind of really the first step into uh, keeping and maintaining our culture, but also adding on top of it. Um, yeah, and we've got the, these systems in place to to really help that that come through in, into the product that we're building. And earlier in our conversation, we were talking about how difficult and challenging it can be with the pace of technological change and, and keeping up with it. And if I was to have asked you two years ago just how big Gen AI would be, even as someone in the heart of that space, I don't think you would have predicted just how quickly it would uh, enter the mainstream. So it's a very difficult question. But if we do look into the future, how do you envision the role of AI and technology and personal finance evolving? What are you seeing now? And and what steps are you taking at Clio to maybe lead that transformation and support better financial well-being for the, the next generation coming up? Yeah, I mean, it, it's... I definitely couldn't have predicted the wild ride we've been on over the last uh, couple of years and, and the pace. Yeah. Um, so I think the next big role AI has is assistance and assistance to help with lots of different aspects of of your of your life so if we look at kind of what we have right now we've had a massive increase in the intelligence and the usefulness of chat interfaces the likes of chat gpt uh giving people access to a huge host of information but also the ability to really cut down data and give it to you very succinctly and understandably. Um, I think of this as reactive. So you'll go into that AI, you're going to ask questions, you have a thought you need help with. Um, Where I'm most excited next is uh, agents and assistants. So um, AI helping you in the background. And this may not just be in in finances but you can think of um multiple forms of ai helping you in the background in some ways kind of automatically optimizing parts of your life clio is this for personal finances how it can help you in the background um you won't have to then in the future go to ai to ask these questions it will have uh, the ability to look at your financial data. Clio can do that and provide you guidance proactively. Um, but also your health and fitness data. You won't have to go and look at your watch and scroll through and understand kind of where you're at today. But it will be proactive. It will be providing you summaries that you need and helping you with tasks in the background. And that's where we're going with uh, with Clio to Clio. Um, an AI to be that real financial assistant that is there for you and helping you and being proactive. Um, so yeah, we've got re- reactive. I think the next the next kind of stream will be proactive agents and assistants helping you uh, in all different forms of your life. And on a more personal level, of course, there's a real pressure on everyone to be in a state of almost continuous learning to keep up to speed with this technological change. So I've got to ask, where or how do you self-educate? Anything, any advice you can pass on to the listeners? Yeah, so, yeah, it's definitely a big deal right now yeah. um, in in the AI world, but also massively important to my position. Um, I do this in a couple of ways. I like to spend time with, with the team. Uh, I have skip levels across all my areas, and that's both to understand what they're working on so I can learn from that, what challenges they have. So I might be able to go and research and and help them. Um, This also gives me that buzz uh, that I got when I was hands-on. I get to see kind of people building things, which is great. Um, But I also still read a lot. Uh, I, I try and keep on top of the papers in the AI world. Um... So a couple of weeks ago, I, I read a paper called Thinking Assistance. I can't remember the full title. 
Um, but this was about building a thought partner to to think alongside you um, with an LLM. Um, so that's the AI world. I think still important to keep track of the the research papers that are out there. I also try and keep up to date on on books. So Will Larson, um, who's a, a great CTO, a couple of different places. Um, he's written some really good books for engineering leaders, but also engineers. Um, so I've just been reading the Engineering Ex- Executives Primer. Um, and then finally, I'm I'm still a builder at heart. I uh, I love kind of getting my hands dirty when I have time. Um, so I do try and play with the new AI that that's coming out, the the new models that are being released, and but also things my team are building. So yeah, I try to um, yeah still have a poke about when I, when I can. Uh, obviously, not as much time. Uh, to do that as as used to in in different roles, but yeah, I do try and keep uh, as sharp as I can there. Yeah, I think that curiosity when you got that uh, tech IT blood running through your veins that never leaves you. You always want to keep your uh, hands dirty and look under the hood at how it all works. And for anyone listening, though, just wants to find out more information about Clio, dig a little bit deeper, contact you or your team, or we'll just find out more about Clio. What's the best starting point? Yeah, so you can go to our, our website, so meetclio.com, uh, or our socials, Instagram is at meetclio, or LinkedIn, it's Clio AI. Um, we're also hiring, so we're hiring across Clio, but also, especially in, in the tech team, for engineers, analysts, machine learning engineers. Um, so yeah, you can you can find jobs on our, on our website, um, or yeah, feel free to to reach out to me on LinkedIn. It's uh, Sam Taylor. Should be able to find me. It's a relatively common name, but put Clear at the end and you'll find me pretty quickly. Awesome. Well, I'll add links to everything there so people can find you nice and easily, as, uh, including, of course, the jobs page, if we've got any techies listening that want to check that out. And so many things I love about what you're doing here. Whenever people talk about the world of finance, they always talk about the 1%. But I love how clear I was positioned yourself as a platform for the 99% with this AI assistant defining a, a new category in many ways, one that goes beyond just saving uh, and budgets, actually changing how we feel about our finances and yes it is sophisticated technology under the hood but i think it's the simplicity and the humor behind clio as well that is so refreshing but more than anything thanks so much for just sharing the story behind it and the, the great work you're doing there thanks for joining me today sir yeah thanks a lot i think it's clear that the fusion of ai and personal finance is not just changing the game it's attempting to rewrite the rules And Clio's journey from a vision born out of frustration with traditional banking to a platform empowering over 7 million people to take control of their financial lives is nothing short of inspiring. And with AI-driven conversational interfaces and a deep commitment to personalised financial advice that removes bias and adds inclusivity, I wish Clio the best of luck in charging towards a future where managing money is not just easier, but a lot more engaging. And I think as we look ahead, the possibilities of AI as proactive assistance in our financial lives seems completely boundless. But it also leaves me with a thought-provoking question. How can we leverage AI, not just in finance, but in other areas of our lives? Areas to make everyday decisions simpler, smarter, and more aligned with our personal, unique, individual long-term goals. And this is where I put the microphone in front of you, because I don't have all the answers here. I invite you to share with me your thoughts, your perspectives, and join the conversation on how technology can reshape the landscape, not just of personal finance, but of just about every area you can imagine. So please email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes. Let's keep this conversation going. But that's it for today. So just a big thank you for listening as always. And until next time don't be a stranger.